Hey everybody, welcome back. Doing a video about the deadliest duo in the galaxy. Is Empowered Gamora stronger than Empowered Thanos? Yeah, this Infinity Watch team seems to be shaping up in a manner that could reshape some metas. So yeah, we'll just dive into that a little bit. We got the blog, uh, throw some thoughts at it, and just kind of move along. So, all right. Discord link in the description below. Why would you want to click that? To follow along with content to get towards our 10K giveaway for our 10,000 subscribers. So uh, go ahead and part of that giveaway is going to be about commenting in uh, the videos. So we're going to be searching some of our videos and picking the uh, the folks from the comments in those videos. So uh, go ahead and comment. It could be simply like, hi, my name is Stanley or Barbara. Gertrude, whatever your name might be, or make up a name, or say something about the video. I don't know. Whatever you want. As long as you spread some love and be kind, that's all good, right? So anyway, so do that. Uh yeah, let's get to these this this duo. Bring me Wolverthor! All right, so we got an unexpected Tuesday blog, and it's basically about uh, Nebula and Gamora and their reworks, how they're going to fit in with Infinity Watch. Uh, long and short of this is that there is some uh, some stat reworks, some kit reworks. Uh, you can see this is Gamora empowered, just some animations. She has a ginormous sword at this point. Uh, this one, this this part of the video, she's like, Ugh. and then she's just like, Ugh, I'm going to hit you with my sword. Ugh. You know, it's a little bit weird there. I don't, I don't get that one. I was just kind of like, so, ugh, like point. I've got a big sword. Ugh. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, I just wanted to hate on that because I'm a hater. All right. So anyway, so uh, let's start out with Gamora. So um, basically, the way this is going to work, we're going to start off with our old abilities first, okay? Because uh, it's important to know her her main stuff up here. Uh, she's got some stat upgrades. The health, damage, armor, resistance. This is awesome. This gets, you know, we'll put her in the ranking sheet with all this stuff once it's officially in-game and on msf.gg. But I love seeing this stuff. Give her a little bit survivability, even higher damage. Love seeing it. Basic, it's a little bit more damage. You're guaranteed with the bonus attack. Cool store. And this is all before Empowered right, right now. Okay, this is before Empowered. The reason I'm starting here is because it's important to understand how to become Empowered. So, uh, yeah, the basic when she's unempowered is just a little bit more damage. Special, again, a little bit more damage. You're going to get the chain. Uh, great with a little bit more damage. You still get the speed bar on uh, a kill. Uh, the at part here also is if Adam Warlock is an ally, it, this can chain to stealth targets and it can't be countered. All right, I guess that's fine. Don't know how often that's going to happen when he's an ally and she's not empowered, but regardless, it's there. Uh, ultimate, uh, this is, oh, you're still getting offense for two turns. Uh, you get a little bit extra damage. You still get the, uh, speed bar on the kill. Passive. All right. So this is the part that's very different. On spawn, gain plus one charge for each non-Infinity Watch ally. So for anybody who's a non-Infinity Watch ally, you're going to get a charge. Why does that matter? Okay. Why does that matter? That matters because... Uh, on turn, if not charged, then become empowered. So you don't want to get charges with her. All right. So if you're going to remember anything from this video, have as many Infinity Watch allies as you can with her. So she gets no charges. Um, and you want to know that she'll become empowered when she doesn't have any charged. Okay. So the rest of this is she gets the revive mechanic if she's health uh, full at the beginning of the match. That is seeming to be a new thing with heroes for hire and uh apparently all of infinity watch thus far uh, on this character any infinity watch allies turn you lose the charge that's why this is why actually i forgot that part um it, because if an infinity watch ally goes you lose a charge and adam warlock you get two so while we don't have any other infinity watch allies she'll what she'll start with two charges so depending what the speed is of adam warlock and nebula i uh, she'll if Adam warlock's first she's immediately not charged but more than likely gamora is going to go before them so she'll take a turn and then lose her charges uh which is kind of stinky but whatever Hopefully with the uh, a full Infinity Watch team, she can, she'll go without these charges. So she's at least useful at the for now once you get Adam Warlock. 
And again, no charges. She's empowered. Unempowered, fill speed bar by 50% and clear all negative effects from self if she has any. Heal for 50% of this character's max health. Great. If negative effects removed, heal self for 10% per negative effect. All right. That's pretty amazing. Uh, whenever she becomes empowered, she's just basically healing herself uh, to full. So she's like, I'm a new character because I'm now empowered. Uh, when this character drops below 30%, apply taunt to the highest health ally and gain two regen. You think you're going to kill her? Guess what? Nope. That person over there is taunted. I'm giving regen to myself. Better have a clear for that taunt or you're not going to be able to get back to Gamora. Again, she's got the crit chance, uh, some additional crit chance per additional allies, uh, and a high resistance against defense down. So you're going to, again, be harder to kill her. So now let's get up to the empowerment, right? So passive. This is all the stuff I'm now reading is in the uh, with the empowerment. Again, the health is full at the start of the match. You're reviving. Awesome. On turn, flip defense up on any enemy that has defense up. So basically, whenever she goes, if there is a team, and think about this as war offense. How many war defense teams start with defense up? She's going to flip it on her turn. And it says any enemy. So they all, have, everybody has defense up. Flip. You're all getting defense down. Okay. When this character's, and she's fast. Remember that, okay? When this character's health, and, and if you've got a full infinity watch, on turn, she fills speed bar by 50%. So her speed plus that, she's going quick. So uh, that Infinity Watch team, she's going to go. She's then going to flip anybody who's got defense up into defense down. Uh, again, when this character's health drops below 30%, you're not killing her. Go over there, hit that person, and I'm going to start healing myself. Thanks for playing. Gain 15% for each Infinity Watch ally. 15% piercing. Okay. Gain 10% cringe chance, uh, and then the Guardians, and she's never going to be with them anymore. Uh, and Infinity Watch allies also gain 10% crit chance. There's an additional 5% crit chance for additional allies. Uh, and then again, the high resistance to uh, defense down. So uh, part of this uh, is the energy cost. I don't know if, I mean, you could pick ultimate or special. One of the questions I asked the devs is, if for some reason, if she starts um, with not empowered and takes a turn and then becomes empowered, does that mean on her second turn she's ready to go on both of these? Or does it reset this and it's like, all right, now she's empowered, so now this kit comes to play? Because if that's what happens, then I'm less... Um, this kit's, it, It's still good, but it's less sexy to me. So I'd love it if, for whatever reason, if she, went, if she wasn't empowered, she goes then her next turn she becomes empowered and then these are now at full energy because she's to it'll be her second turn that's what my hope is so assuming that's the case she would like you'd look at her ultimate gain offense up for two turns attack primary target for 600 percent damage on kill fill speed bar it can't be a, the uh, attack can't be dodged or blocked so if there is deflex sorry about it doesn't matter if for some reason you decide to use a special instead, clear death proof from all enemies. If any enemy had death proof, apply one death proof up to a maximum of three to all Infinity Watch allies. So <laughs> this is crazy. I'd almost want to do this first over the ultimate and go, okay, if there's a death proof out there, I'm now taking it and giving it to my team. Uh, and then she attacks all enemies for 400% damage and applies heal block for two turns and it can't miss that's the part where she's like swinging the sword all funky now why does this matter even more because if you look at adam warlock oh where is it here if this character or any infinity watch ally gains death proof apply safeguard to that character and as we know from that kit safeguard makes it so that you cannot lose or flip that buff so as soon as gamora says hey enemy you've got death proof guess what i'm giving it to my squad and i'm gonna add plus one and it's like all right, that's cool. So if that character ever gets another death proof or any enemy gets a death proof, she does it again. And Adam Warlock then is also applying safeguard. So that's pretty, pretty dope. So uh, like that. So if you do that first, and then you go to the uh, ultimate again, gain offense up for two turns. Um, I actually would love to have that offense up before using that special. So maybe think about that a little bit because offense up and then into the special with all of those uh, hitting all those enemies at 400% damage. Ooh, man, that's gonna, that's gonna hurt. Especially, I mean, does the defense down? Well, 
I guess it depends what you want to do with the defense down. Maybe maybe hit all enemies when they've got defense down and then get the alt offense up to get through whatever's left. Whatever. Still, it's it's sick. Uh, can attack. And then the the basic is attack primary target for 200%, 290% damage and apply bleeds. Bonus attack two times for 240%. So it is uh, going to be hitting hard, applying bleed. Um, it doesn't look like the bonus attacks apply bleed, and that's fine. So Gamora is looking pretty sick. Is she better than Thanos Empowerment? I mean, look. Um, Thanos has to be with four other characters. He has to, or he's not becoming empowered. She can technically become empowered without anybody else. It takes a little bit longer for her to get empowered without Infinity Watch allies, but you figure even with two, you know, she's going to be a force to be reckoned with once she gets empowered. So for that reason, and for some of these like hits, you know, uh, it's definitely a debate you can have. Um, you know, Thanos does have the flip. He does have the regen that he's throwing at people, you know, that which makes his team around him better. But, you know, if, if there could become some options with her, you know, oof, man, you know, Thanos without uh, Black Order is just a battery, essentially. All right. So then Nebula. All right. She got a rework here. Um, we got the base stat upgrades. This came in late. 20% uh, to health damage, armor focus resistance. Not a ton. And her stats weren't amazing as is. So we'll see how this shakes out. Let's look at her passive first. Um, her original passive was trash. It was 15% a chance to, uh, to assist when an ally attacks. Uh, and she had a 15% chance to revive. Uh, all right, so on spawn, she gains speed up. That's great. Like that. So she'll go quicker. If health is full at the, of, at the start of the match, again, you're reviving with 10% of this character's max health. All right. That's uh, plus plus 15% for each Infinity Watch ally. So if she's got four, you know, you're actually doing what's that, 60%? So you're 70% max health there? Pretty good. On revive, she's also gaining death proof. All right. That is sick. So I'm, I'm digging that. Uh, on turn... Apply assist now and speed up to a to random Gamora ally. Uh, okay, I guess there's two of them. Uh, but you apply assist now to Gamora. So you do like that assist from Gamora. Now, I think, you know, normally when you get an assist from someone, you want the original person, to, the attacker, to be a striker and the assister to be a skirmisher so you can get the triple tap. But honestly, I'm going to be hard-pressed to do anything other than striker or maybe raider on Gamora. I mean, Gamora's going to be critting a lot. Um... But man, she's going to be hitting hard too. So it, I, I'm not sure I'm going to want to go skirmisher on Gamora there. Um, and then she's got a 20% chance to assist plus 20% chance per Infinity Watch ally. So she's going to be assisting Nebula nonstop. So for that reason, I do want Nebula as a skirmisher because she's going to be assisting. So anytime she assists, she should lay down that vulnerable and she will go ahead and get, if you've got a striker on that uh, other Infinity Watch ally, you're going to get the triple tap. So I like that. Uh, let's see. So uh, we'll just work our way up here. Uh, the ultimate used to be just attack damage. You get 30% more damage and you're playing heal block now. Before there was a 60% chance to chain to two targets. Now you're chaining plus 20% more damage and again, applying heal block. Uh, if this character has three or more Infinity Watch allies, chain up to 10 adjacent targets. So, you know, a multiple man in his dupes, uh, I guess maybe in raid, you know, basically she's going to be, a t she's going to be hitting everybody on the board. So, okay. Now you're chaining everybody. And this is not mode specific notice. None of the stuff I'm saying is mode specific hint, hint for where these guys are going to be end up. Uh, she still gains it to evade. And then she also applies evade to all infinity watch allies. So, all right, I like that. You, if you start adding a battery to this team or something on this team that, you know, spreads positive effects or extends positive effects on this team, it's going to be nasty. Nasty. All right, counterattack breaks a chain. If this character has three or more Infinity Watch allies, can't be counterattacked. Attack always crits if the target is summoned or clone. That's kind of like, all right, whatever. Uh, special, get an additional 110% damage on that. Um, and you apply two counters to all Infinity Watch allies. So she's throwing out buffs every time that she's taking a turn, which is really nice. Now, the part that is really probably the sexiest in this kit, in my mind, is the new basic. So you gain 40% damage, no big deal, but you also get 10% of the target's max health. Now, and you gain speed up. Now, this matters mainly because of this passive if she's going to assist every let's see 40 yeah 100 percent of the time and that assist gets 10 percent that target's max health every time wow 
Wow, you are going to be draining people. Just straight up draining. So, yeah, this team is looking to be shaping up into I definitely a more often see more than likely. Um, you know, if they've got heals somewhere that maybe flip it to defense, but right now I'm looking at this as being an offense team. Um, you know, if they get a clear, you know, maybe this is already a heroes for higher counter. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But, you know, the, the fact that you're flipping defense down on Gamora's turn every time or defense up into defense down, that's pretty nasty. So, yeah, I, I would get ready for this team if you're uh, looking to have an offensive meta in, um, you know, some critical game modes. Uh, the team's going to be good, more than likely. they still got two characters left. I think even with these three, they're going to be fun to play with. Uh, I don't know if they'll have all... I mean, I can't imagine the full team's going to come in the same patch. I'll probably do the three and then the patch after that. So that's where it's like maybe they start to be built up to be good, and we see, and maybe they see exactly what those last two characters need. They make them to make sure that they're good to go. And uh, yeah, we start dominating them. So let me know what you guys think. Comment below, like I said, you know, 10K giveaway once we get to 10,000 subscribers. So start commenting because that's where we're going to pull the winner from for these giveaways once we get to 10,000 subscribers, which uh, hopefully we can give out to uh, some fun people who are, you know, hanging out in the Discord and commenting. We're probably looking for all that type of stuff. So just kind of celebrating, spread good karma, positivity all over the place, right? Yay. Yay, yes. Um, so yeah, hammer down that like button, click the notification bell and subscribe and until next time i hope you have a wonderful day